When is the last time you came here, Linda Bergen? The day he passed away. It was impossible for me to come back here. I didn't even want to pass by this place. So this is the first time I've come back. This young woman is full of remorse. She regrets having betrayed her father's last will. The day before he died in May 2005, Amar Bergman asked her daughter to promise she would incinerate him. Today, however, following the court's decision, Amar Bergman is buried in the Muslim precinct of the cemetery of Lille. It hurts. It reminds a lot of bad memories. What is written? I don't know, Leah. It's Arabic. I don't know. I don't understand. He would know how to read it. Who? Grandpa. Dad couldn't read Arabic. Where is the law which says that because he's born as a Muslim, he must be buried in Muslim fashion? I've never heard of such a law. A lot of people talked about secularity during the presidential election. I don't know how people managed not to be shocked by this. All political parties considered nobody dared raising their voice. Nobody. He was atheist. I've never seen my father make a prayer. My father drank alcohol. We all ate pork. Except for his duties as a citizen, he didn't want anything else to run his life. A Frenchman from Algerian descent, Amar's life was taken away by cancer at the age of 55. Children are preparing for the funeral on May 17, 2005, when their mother-in-law, Amina Ramdani, files a lawsuit against them. Amar's ex-wife claims that he's Muslim and that he wished to be buried according to the rules of Islam. There's no will. The judge must determine if the deceased was a believer, and Amina Ramdani is determined to convince him. When we get to the court, we see her wearing a veil. We're surprised and we think she has changed. Suddenly she wears a veil and we think, damn, what happened to her? Maybe in a simple-minded way, I think, who is she doing this for? At the hearings of the court in Lille, what I call the Palace of the Republic, I see the rector of a mosque with a circle of veiled people. And they are all quite vindicative, expressing their theories in the wings of the court. She showed up with a man called Amar Lasfar, and we later learned that he was the rector of a mosque. Why was he here? That's a good question. It's Mrs. Ramdani who said she wanted to bring the testimony of the rector to claim that her husband was actually a Muslim, and that seemed to be a standard procedure. It seems that Dr. Lassar didn't know the disease personally. No, I don't think so. I don't believe so. The rector of a mosque who doesn't know the defunct, an ex-wife who hasn't seen him for two years, following the first hearings, the plaintiff are rebutted. But on May 23rd, at the Court of Appeal of Douai, there's a reversal of situation. The rector Lasfar orders a decree. He claims to defend the moral interest in the Bergham case. But for what reason does he claim to defend that moral interest? As if judges in France weren't able to take that moral interest in charge? First, I don't recall that text. I can find it if you want. Mr. Lasfar defends the moral interest in that case. Here it is. But what does that mean? The moral interest of who? 
Un Vézlam Il représente M. Burkham, moral interest. Il ne faut pas aller chercher au-delà. Vous ne devez pas donner tant d'attention à un document qui a été écrit et qui a été écrit aussi. So I find it gross to exploit something which has no reason to be. Attached to this statement, a religious judgment that one must call a fatwa, and it's addressed to the judge of Douai. I'll read it for you. Only a Muslim judicial authority in a Muslim country, meaning not even in your country in France, you don't have the right to study that kind of case, to judge it, to examine it, and to give a verdict. Must define and verify the causes of a person's apostasy. When someone dares sending this to judges appointed by the Republic, saying, I forbid you to judge that case, this goes beyond limit. The fatwa forbids the court of the Republic to decide on the Burgham case. We have appealed to Rector last far, but he didn't wish to answer. Anyway, on June 3rd, 2005, the Paris Court of Appeal gave its verdict. Amar Bergman will be buried according to the Islamic ritual. The court decided that there wasn't a sufficient evidence of his atheism. He is from Algerian descent, born a Muslim, he will die as a Muslim. It's not because we no longer go to the mosque or to church that we lose faith or get lost. I just want to say, sorry if I failed. Maybe I didn't rise strong enough. Maybe I didn't cry aloud enough. I just wanted to say, sorry. And wherever he is, I'll think of him for the rest of my life. Three years later, the courts of Lille cancel a marriage for lack of virginity. The press protests. A great demonstration is planned. But on that day, only 400 demonstrators take to the streets under the Parisian skeptic eyes. The goal? Defend secularism, which is endangered. Secularism is based on the principle of separation of church and state, which is inscribed in the law of 1905. The Republic assures the freedom of conscience, but it doesn't recognize or subsidizes any worship. One is free to practice his religion in the private sphere, but the public sphere must remain neutral and non-religious. At the time, it's the only compromise able to restore peace in France, which is torn by violent clashes between the Catholic Church and the anti-clericals. Thanks to that compromise, we succeed in living together, despite our differences of belief. Today, that compromise is in danger. Our journey begins in Lille. Now, seven years ago, Martin Aubry, mayor of the city, authorizes the creation of a schedule exclusively reserved to women in a public swimming pool. Denise Cacheux is the one who gave her this idea. She's the honorary president of the social center which runs that program. We've negotiated with the city hall of Lille. Martine was open enough. She didn't want any identity politics measure, but something for women, yes. A little reorientation was requested concerning the issue of being between women. My Muslim women asked for a female swimming instructor, so we negotiated with the city hall to get a female instructor. Another change was requested because it's a tournesol swimming pool. It's an old pool with windows. And one last change was asked. We only want Muslims. This is when I said no. We don't know any religious, ethnic communitarianism. My greatest victory was to leave it open to non-Muslims. And did Martin Aubry support you in that case? Absolutely. Martin well understood the procedure. She backed us up and helped us. That's what we call a reasonable arrangement. 
We fit accordingly the principle of secularism to take into account the interests of such and such religious group. But basically, this is a distortion of the law of 1905. What does Martin Aubry think? Martin Aubry, it's not going to be possible. I tried to find other speakers, but I can't think of any pertinent speaker on this issue. What I wanted to see with you is the swimming pool issue. What's going on in Lille? With time, everything has returned to normal. We have a schedule which draws a lot of non-Muslim women, and there's no more specific condition required. If the female swimming instructor is on holiday, we bring in a male instructor who will run the session. The official communication is clear. There's no denominational schedule at the pool, even concerning the staff of men. Just in case, we go and check on location. When it's reserved ladies, you're on permanent duty, right? Yes, ladies are on duty, only ladies. They're not coming today because it hasn't started yet, and then there's Ramadan, but they'll come back soon. As a matter of fact, no men can work here during that time, right? That's right, no staff of men, even at the counter? No. The only change since the opening? The windows are no longer covered. We used to put curtains in the pool so that women couldn't be seen from outside. The whole structure had to be covered? No, we had curtains inside, that's all. But you can't see anything from outside because of the gate. Right? And also because of the fir trees on the other side. But that's the way it is, we had to, do we had to put the curtains, but we don't have to put them anymore. But it was no joke. Closing during Ramadan, a staff exclusively made of women? It's hard to believe that we're not dealing with a religious communitarian sphere set within a public building funded by the state. Faced with the obstacle of her press office, we take advantage of Martin Aubry's participation to a meeting of the Socialist Party in Lille to directly address her. I have a few questions about secularism very quickly. Well, I'm sorry, but um, I can't. It will only take a second. A phenomenon which we talk about a lot is the issue of swimming pools in Lille. Can you explain us? As a feminist first, and then as a Republican, I hesitated a lot, and then I thought I was ready to experiment because having inscribed liberty, equality, fraternity on the pediment of my city hall is easy to do. Making it alive is much more difficult. When we opened that, we had fixed a rule. There couldn't be a majority of women who are Muslim. It wasn't reserved for Muslim women, but for all women women who couldn't be in the company of men for different reasons. So it's a little complicated, but I think that today we must sometimes take a kind of risk even if it's not so easy to reach our goal. I mean the equality of rights for women and their emancipation. The only thing is that when we investigate on location, we realize that there's majority of Muslim women, and I'll give the list. It was closed because of Ramadan. It was closed during the time slot because of Ramadan. No, it's not closed because of Ramadan. It's absolutely impossible. It's closed. It doesn't exist anymore. It's still in place. No, it's over. We've stopped that program. It won't happen again this year. Here. So, what you were told isn't true. Maybe the swimming pool was closed because of Ramadan. A public school closed because of Ramadan? Surprising. And concerning the time slot reserved to women, the social center claims that it didn't receive any order from the city hall to close it. So, who should we believe? Let's go to Roubaix, a few kilometers from Lille. Here, the local councillors are protesting. The city allegedly funded some organizations who set up religious activities under the pretense of promoting cultural programs. For Christian Maé, these subsidies are therefore illegal. Here's the latest case. La subsidy to cover the uh, transport costs for an excursion in Paris. It serves a cultural demonstration of the French Muslim community. The organization has arranged that excursion in Paris. This event happened on May 10, 
on the day when the UOIF demonstrated at the Bourget, and by the way, it had the famous philosopher Tariq Ramadan. We know Tariq Ramadan pretty well. He comes to Roubaix quite often. You know. Other organizations leaning to other left-wing parties invite him very regularly in a great municipal room land free of charge by the city of Roubaix. It allows this person to come and spread his good word. Here's the report of the conference held by the UOIF, the Union of Islamic Organizations of France. We find in there one of the precepts of Tariq Ramadan, the Anur verse on the stoning of adulterous women is a dissuasive maxim which contributes to the protection of the family. So this was the so-called cultural excursion paid by the city to its youth. And if some local councillors continue to protest, others prefer remaining silent today. Mrs. Becker, a local councillor in my group, was intimidated on several occasions. She's received death threats by telephone, by anonymous letters, ordering her to remain silent. She was insulted on several occasions. Sometimes she was knocked over. So there's actually the intention from a minority, a very little group of people, to reduce the silence. Those who want to defend at all costs the purity of secularism, if I may say so. Celles et ceux qui veulent défendre à tout prix une, une laïcité euh, pure et dure, si, si, si je puis dire. Pressure of the fundamentalists on elected officials, lending a public room for worship activities, illegal public funding. During two months, the city hall systematically rejected our interview requests. But when he learned that we were determined to expose this case to the public, the mayor, René van der Rindonk, finally decided he would rather answer our questions. The Republic shouldn't fund any worship, absolutely. Do you agree with that rule? Of course, it's obvious. What some of your opponents blame you for is the last subsidy concerning a Muslim organization which has chartered a bus for the UIF. That's a problem, isn't it? It received a subsidy one time. You're now telling me that it didn't use the money for what it was meant? I'm ready to admit that. I'm going to check everything. And I have no reason to think that a journalist like you didn't do his job. If we can actually prove what you say, I assure you that it won't receive any subsidies next time. It's as simple as that. However, I completely assume the fact that some organizations which are non-religious and which may have other activities beside or beside religion can by agreement based on the goals fixed by a public policy benefit from subsidies. Now, if there's a misuse of funds, thanks for finding about it. Believe me, I'll take a close look at it. Merci du renseignement. Croyez que je vais regarder ça de près. Can you believe that the city's first elected official isn't aware of subsidies granted by the local council? Especially when some officials sided against him on that issue. But in that case, why is there so much complacency? What are the factors which come into play concerning the political decisions taken on these issues? I think that there's a tradition in this city, and the mayor of Ruba is part of this tradition, that of social Christians stemming from social Catholicism. They call themselves secular, but the fear of not appearing as a true democratic, liberal, and tolerant person translates into a certain number of temptations of being indulgent by saying, for example, it doesn't cost anything, and it can get you some votes. Are we negotiating with secularism for weakness of conviction? Wouldn't there be a subconscious nostalgia among those members of the Socialist Party that we call left-wing Catholics? I don't compromise my principles. I have firm principles. Essentially, I respect the French Republic's principles, but in practice, you must understand people and learn how to live with them. 
faut vivre avec I'm eux. marked by my Catholic education, my Catholic ideas. I actually believe that human rights essentially en fait, stem moi, from the biblical principles. And this is what has guided my political life and my life as a volunteer. Is this group of left-wing Christians developing into a popular trend among members of the Socialist Party? No, but we recognize and know each other, yet we don't have one organized influential place. Jacques When Jacques comes Lille, to Lille, he goes to mass. mass. Martine <laughs> doesn't go anymore, but her dad does. Martine n'y va plus, mais son papa n'y va. Another place. For a few years, religions have been trying to set foot in the French public services. At school, at hospital, all means are good. Nice, on the French Riviera. Serge Darmon is the president of the Jewish association called SAMI. Today he has a meeting at the hospital to discuss the issue of kosher meals, a right guaranteed by the patient's charter. But he already has another idea in mind when he meets the director of the hospital's legal department. You know that the Jewish religion is based on the Torah, on the Old Testament, which is the law for us. By the way, we call it the written law, which says that we don't have the right to mix milk and meat. Each time I've met dietitians, they've told me, we don't have any knowledge regarding this notion of a kosher meal, or now a halal meal. So if you agree, I can come and give an explanation. I completely agree to organize a meeting with our dietitians and our culinary professionals to discuss with them and see how we can improve our service and allow our culinary team to satisfy all or almost all religions. I see that you're completely ready to respect all beliefs, so I have an offer to submit. I suggest that on the occasion of some celebrations, we organize a meal for all the patients. To say, for example, today is a Jewish celebration, so we're going to make a kosher meal to actually show that the Jews are also patients like anyone else. Does the kosher meal have a religious connotation? I think so. So we actually have a problem. We cannot impose a meal related to religion for people who don't wish so. And I'm not sure if you're not exceeding your role by making such offers. You can always negotiate with me. If you tell me we can do that, Mr. Darman, but we can't do that, an imam or a rabbi will tell you that's the way it is. It's an obligation. It's our religion, period. Take it or leave it. Finally, the director's resistance is short-lived. I recognize your action and your dynamism. You offer the establishment of meals on the occasion of the very symbolic celebrations of the Catholic religion. We're going to study that offer. The ideas that you're bringing are interesting. But it's true that the hospital tries to put in place this principle of secularism and to respect the religious beliefs in lots of fields. We make sure, for example, that our staff doesn't show any belief even if we've tolerated from time to time that some members and some young doctors wear the veil. Members of the public service still don't have the right to wear a religious sign. It's absolutely forbidden. Do you think we should still make room for some arrangements? When I mentioned the veil, I didn't mean the veil per se. I actually meant the scarf. It was the scarf which covers the head and which replaced the traditional haircut. You see, the fact of negotiating and accepting a modification and arrangement to the rigorous rules, well, if that allows to favor and maintain a consensus, I think we should do it. Consensus. 
consensus. That's what it's all about. In order to avoid conflict, we'd rather compromise with the law. But in the long term, are we running the risk of encouraging religious communitarianism? Let's take a look at this meeting at the headquarters of the organization SAMI. Serge Darmon has called David Chouchouna, great rabbi of Nice, and the imam, Otman Aisawi. Only the church has decided at the last moment not to appear on the family picture. I asked the hospital for a special meal during a celebration, not only for Jewish or Muslim people, but for everybody. First of all, I want to salute the initiative of Mr. Darwin, of Sam. The fact that we say that God is the healer, that implies that doctors are only there to cure. Do you agree with me, doctor? <laughs> I'm glad The first hospitals were created by religious bodies. It goes to show that it was this kind of spirit which allowed to heal patients. Is it because we're now in a secular state that we should omit the spiritual dimension? I will back up Sammy for that request. If it's possible, there's no reason to hesitate. We are headed to Lyon and the public schools. Since the 70s, in the dining halls, there's always been an option to pour. But it's enough today. Three years ago, pupil parents launched a campaign obliging kindergarten dining halls to adjust to the kosher and halal rules. Faced with massive mail, the city experiments. In order to satisfy secular organizations, just like religious organizations, there's a solution, the vegetarian meal. Yves Fournel is the mayor's secretary of childhood affairs. Vous aviez des enfants qui ne mangeaient pas? Bon, quand il y avait du cassoulet, par exemple, you had children who didn't eat. When there was cassoulet, for example, they would eat cassoulet leaving the sausages aside, a series of little things like that. However, there was no pork in it. Sometimes it was made of pork. Not only we had 32% of pork free men, but we had a lot of children, in particular those who came from the most underprivileged neighborhoods. And these children would not even eat the main dish. And that's a real problem in terms of public health. But most of all, the city had to face a new growing economy. On we also had to face peer dans un certain in number de, of de, de, It's not physical pressure, but a moral pressure. La pression entre this is not good if you do. It's not pression physique, it's a pression moral entre eux. I'm talking about bien, primary schools. I'm not talking about high school. And as a result, the solution is a meat-based And it satisfies most of the choice for without falling into a religious equilibrium. on a abouti à une solution qui est un menu sans viande. Donc ça a satisfait la, plus, la plupart des, des demandes de, de choix, sans tomber pour autant dans un menu communautaire ou, ou confessionnel. Hein. On a, pour le moment, je vais être prudent, I'll be prudent, mais but for the moment, we've been able to stop every extremist initiative les, trying to go les further les in the request. Secularists are divided by this reform. On one side, Michel Vian, who appeals against the decision. Facing her, Annette Bloch took part in negotiating about the dining halls. That's it. Notre souci, c'était vraiment les enfants. We were worried about the children and the necessity for them to have a whole meal. What kind of answer can the secular school give to these children? Peut donner à ces enfants-là. Alors nous sommes dans le compassionnel. We're dealing with compassion here. There's a rule according to which you defeat the Republic. You just have to make people cry about you. Children, children are always the standard bearers of fundamentalism. Because yielding to this kind of argument means accepting that French Muslims submit themselves to this political force. This kind of accepter that the Muslims of France are submitted to 
un groupuscule politique en By refusant to arrange meals, we're not taking repas, into account this part of the population and we encourage them to put children in religious schools which isn't the wish of the republic in the end. Mettre les enfants dans des écoles religieuses ce qui est quand même pas le souhait de, de la république globalement. Si on est prêt à céder, If we are ready to give up menus, on the issues of many sur les programmes scolaires, programmes, school sur les tenues vestimentaires des unes ou des what autres, happen to the school of the republic? This à, really means oui, playing the sorcerer's apprentice. C'est vraiment Jouer à l'apprenti sorcier. Comment on les définit ces limites Je ne peux pas vous donner une réponse générale. Je ne peux pas vous donner une réponse générale. Je suis pas capable. C'est compliqué de savoir à quel moment on est en train de basculer de l'autre côté. Vivre, c'est dangereux. Si je peux me permettre. Certains public establishments ont set clear rules, comme les hôpitaux, par exemple. Patients can choose their practitioner. They can consult a man or a woman. There's just one limit, emergency cases. Hospital of Lyon, obstetric surgery. August 15, 2008, Dr. Benayoun performs a delivery with a couple of Muslim fundamentalists. Ouais. D'accord. Bon, bah, voilà. Donc euh, voilà, ça s'est passé en fait euh, un week-end où j'étais le seul médecin de euh, garde it. ce jour-là. Et au moment où elle a accouché, il y a eu un blocage en fait au niveau des épaules du bébé qui a nécessité que j'intervienne très rapidement. À peine je me suis approché que le mari s'est tourné très violemment vers as moi en me disant « Qu'est-ce que tu fous là Personne ne t'a dit de venir. Tu as fait exprès de venir à ce moment-là. » Il m'a empoigné en fait par le cou avec sa deuxième main qui était libre, qui était très menaçante. Il a sorti, vu que son enfant était né, moi, Since the child was born, I left. Juste après l'accouchement, elle s'est mise à saigner de façon abondante. À nouveau, il a fallu intervenir. Moi, j'étais juste là en train de travailler auprès de son épouse. Lui, il était à côté d'elle, à regarder par-dessus. Même s'il voyait sa femme en fait dans un état... He could see that his wife was in serious uh, bah, condition. Grave. It didn't actually prevent uh, bah, him from being so aggressive. Maybe he didn't consider his wife's Donc, life uh, que même la more important de la than sa femme his fundamental était, principles. Lui, uh, to the point bah, of saying, no, no my, my wife could not be taken care of by a male doctor. Non, uh, non, ma femme ne peut pas être prise en charge par un médecin homme. Dr. Benayoun isn't the only one who was shocked by the aggression. The unease has now spread to the rest of the medical staff. Uh, our former head of the clinic was threatened with a knife. One of our midwives was slapped in the face last year. We are called all kinds of names. I was called a bitch a few years ago by a patient's husband. He came with his wife, who was walking a few feet behind him. The patient was completely bailed. The husband was wearing North African baggy trousers. He told me, I want to sign up for my wife. So I told him, like every other patient, that they had two options, a male or a female doctor. He told me, my wife is not a bitch like you. So the only answer I could give him in order not to be aggressive was to say, sir, I'm sorry, there is no more room for your wife. That was my answer. But in order to answer this way, you must have a lot of self-control. En plus, on finit you par euh, anticipating and worrying bah, about patients or the couple's reactions and you ask yourself, avec how will they react? Euh, des patientes ou euh, des couples en se disant, mais comment est-ce qu'ils vont réagir? Je, I think je crois qu'on perd beaucoup de temps et qu'on a peur. Now, if a patient poses a problem when she arrives, we're not forced to receive that patient. And that has been confirmed by the management. Everybody must accept the principle of secularism at the hospital. That's right, we're here to cure people, not to fight. Faced with the new trends of Islamic proselytism, firmness has become the service motto. And to remind the rule, Dr. Rodran has put up a warning notice on the wall. This notice was issued in 2003. It's five years old. The medical staff is co-ed. In case you want to refuse being taken care of by a man, we have the regret of not being able to sign you up for delivery at the hospital. You must be firm and from the onset reminded of principles and don't start giving up. We often have the impression of surrendering on a piece of detail when we have actually already been caught up in the system. The hospital records two disputes per month. But for Dr. Rodran, the situation would be a lot worse without this policy. I have the impression that it's come very progressively. We saw people making prayers in the remote corners of the service, then in a more and more ostentatious fashion. 
When someone stands in the corridor and prays, and when you want to go through, he says you don't respect his religion, that's when you can't run a service properly anymore. I have the impression that these fundamentalist movements are kind of mastermind and pharma distance. You rarely have one fundamentalist movement alone. It usually comes by a series of three or four. So I have the impression that it's not a major agitation, but this agitation is deliberately organized. Donc j'ai l'impression que c'est un minimum d'agitation, mais que cette agitation elle évolue. Secularism is affected by several kinds of attacks. The most brutal ones come from organized political groups. The Party of French Muslims, for example. This organization has coordinated a great part of the movement opposed to the law of 2004 on the issue of religious signs at school. We have a meeting in the kebab restaurant in the center of Lyon at closing time. Nadir Ben Abbas was candidate to the last legislative elections. He gathered 1.5% of the votes. Excuse me, I had a meeting with the Almighty. How did it go? Oh my God, you must experience it to understand. What are the forces trying to block the debate? Who are the actors? The actors are the militants. The, the militants. I'm going to use a word which is important here. Secular fundamentalists. Those are the ones preventing French society to develop its morality. And we must denounce that. We're trying to turn society into an atheist sphere by getting rid of religion in the public sphere. On the contrary, we want the public sphere not to be invaded but at least to keep its touch of spirituality in the general mind of citizens. Islam is a religion and a way of life. I'm not a Muslim at home and an atheist outside. I'm a Muslim at home and outside. L'Islam c'est une religion et un mode de vie. Moi je suis pas musulman chez moi et à tes dehors. Je suis musulman chez moi et dehors. How do you think you will get what other religions didn't manage to get? 50 years ago, there were probably 200 Muslims. Today, we're a few million. I think we must take it into account. It cannot be ignored. But we have hope, a lot of hope. Our ideology isn't based on immediate results. We expect results in the long run. A word to the wise. If you want to hear more, listen to this. It's quite instructive. Freemasonry is a satanic sect. Why do you think they are so eager to defend secularism? Satan is the enemy of religion. And the mastermind of Freemasonry is Satan himself. The goal of Freemasonry is to reduce any kind of spirituality to nothing. What they did with Catholicism, Christianism, Christianism, they want to do it with Islam by stigmatizing our religion. They're actually doing us a lot of harm. This is why they've created secularism in order to destroy religion? Absolutely. Secularism is essentially Satan's doctrine. If France gave up its principle of secularism, what would happen? The country would then look like the United Kingdom, a perfect incarnation of the communitarian model, the reversal of secularism. The concept of secularism as a system of thought 
has no roots in our history or in our country. We claim to be very tolerant. Let's say that the great school of Eton, the colleges such as Oxford and Cambridge, have always been related to religion. We have a monarch, Her Majesty the Queen, followed by His Majesty the King, who is also the head of the church. We don't have a written constitution. It's always a problem for the British to write a constitution because it means we must tackle the issue of God and faith. So we'd rather not talk about it. And that gives the possibility for other faiths and religions to settle. If it's true that London has become the base of campaigns against French secularism, many religious organizations have actually understood the benefit they could get from the British system. This is the case of Koudrat Singh, spokesman of the French Sikh movement, which only has 10,000 members. Sikhs cannot cut their hair and must cover them with a turban. They are resolutely decided to repeal the law of 2004 on the wearing of religious signs at school. What drives you to get involved so much to obtain the suppression of the law of 2004? In 1999, my spiritual master, Denis Bajung, invited us with his disciples at Annapur Sahib to commemorate the tricentenary of the foundation of the Order of Khalsa. The first thing he told me was that we were called like 300 years ago to stop the tragedy. In a certain way, I was prepared for this attack against the Sikh movement. It's definitely a chivalrous procedure. It's kind of anachronic in this 21st century, but not so much if you think that the 21st century is supposed to be spiritual. Kudrat Singh has a meeting at the law firm Binman and Partners with the president of the United Sikh, the largest Sikh organization in Europe, and its British lawyer. On the agenda of today's meeting, a lawsuit before the European Court of Human Rights against the French state. It is a global effort to, to put uh, this case before the courts. It is also a global effort to put this case to the French government when the Indian Sikh population from India uh, will have put pressure on, on uh, the Indian government to make representations to Sarkozy in his visit in January. Now, the, uh, we anticipate that the government's defense will be something along the following lines, that, um, that the uh, principle of uh, secularism, secularity, uh, laïcité, uh, is <coughs> designed to, to, to keep uh, the uh, state institutions like schools uh, neutral um, and to protect people from uh, the influence of uh, religion or, or pressure to join a religion. Then it passes in, in, in France. It will go spread in all Europe. Why not in India? Why not in India? It's a secular country. The Freemasons are active there also. I've seen not much evidence of it so far, apart from in, um, in France. Yeah, we, we, our experience has exposed us to some developments in that direction. Uh, we just won a case in Belgium where a schoolboy was expelled from a Belgian school because of his desire to wear a turban. There is no secularity constitution concerns in Belgium. But we clearly know that this came about after the French law. Equally, we know of problems in Italy. So far, we are resisting it successfully, but if they go beyond the domestic courts into the international courts, they will have to be fought um, as it is. Do you think you will uh, basically win the, um, the case? Whether we win the right to wear, where the turban is concerned, um, because I'm a person of faith, I leave it to the forces that dictate these answers to determine when we are ready for that victory. But there shall be victory. If France surrendered, it could look like this. Hospital of Preston in Lancaster, Northern Great Britain. Here, Karen Jacob has invented the surgical burqa. The gown consists of five pieces, trousers which don't, yep. Then we've got the gown. You can see it's just slightly different from a regular hospital gown, that it has the sleeve. But normally where does it go? A normal gown would, would, would have sort of a shorter sleeve. 
sort of a wider sleeve for, but, but shorter. Then we've got the first headpiece. So the head goes into the hole, is yeah, that it? that's it, if it goes on. If you imagine my hand is the head. And then that would just sit across the shoulders. And, and then the neck area. And the back as well. And the back, yeah, it will go down the back for the head. This will go down the back and cover the, the back here. And then the final piece. If you need to go to the hospital one day, will you be using a gown? I think I would actually opt to wear the, the gown, purely because it just covers that little bit extra, as you can see. I'm just, you can't see quite that much. Well, it suits you well, though. Thank you. <laughs> Here, the surgical burqa is used by one patient out of ten. Allegedly, it's even become fashionable among Catholic nuns. One thing is for sure, British hospitals have a real interest in surfing on this religious trend. The important thing in England now, as far as healthcare is concerned, is about giving patients choice. All hospitals now are businesses, and the more patients we can come in, the more business it brings us. What are the uh, other uh, accommodation do you have in the hospital uh, for the uh, religious patients? Um, well, we have a mosque here, so there's a prayer room here, so the, the, both patients and staff can, uh, can come and pray at the, uh, during the, different, the five different times during the day. And, and, and also, we do also provide halal meals, for both the patients and the staff if they so want. And if I'm performing an intimate examination on a woman, I always have a chaperone. I always have a female who comes in with me. When I, I never do it on my own, because it may, again, it puts them at ease. And that will hopefully uh, improve the hospital finances even further. France will probably also get new courthouses, like this one in London. Behind this discreet facade, we discover an Islamic court. Since its creation, this court has welcomed 7,000 Muslims to settle their problems of divorce, a non-official court, but tolerated by the authorities. This area you are viewing at the moment is the uh, admin area. This way is the reception, the reception area, uh, where people have to wait for their turn for their interviews. And these are the, these are the interview area where the, the scholars sit and conduct the interviews and the counseling as well. So there are two rooms uh, available. The people who come to consult these ulemas are British citizens for the most part. We were able to attend an arbitration. I give him so many chances. And then now you're trying. He locks me in the house, so much problem. He told me not to work, to stay at home with him. I wasted three years, and then he just left me on the road. And now I'm away from him. One year he's not looking after me. I'm living all alone with my dad. This young woman has been repudiated one year ago, but today her husband goes back on his decision and cashes in he on the breakup. For me, for nothing. You know the yeah. Did he ask you? Remember last time? Did he ask some amount? How much you said? Nine thousand for my cola. Where am I even supposed to get that money? I think. I was did he spend this for you or this? Did no. he call? Did he go? Okay. On the wedding night. Small set. Uh -huh. And that's my. I deserve that because I gave something in return. Now he's my husband. Alright, what we do is we will organize joint meetings. We can decide now. We need uh, that uh, her father comes. Husband should come as well, and there will be joint meeting. How does the talaq works in, in Islamic law? If the man himself, in front of the others, he said, uh, listen to the talaq, I'm pronouncing the talaq for my wife, then that's counter the talaq. And, uh, or if he makes in writing, that's counter the talaq. If they did civil marriage, they have to go to the court, to the court. But if it was only nikah, Islamic marriage, then we have here, and our office is authorized to decide Islamically. And in this case as well, you don't have any civil marriage to deal with at the same time? Uh, civil marriage, I don't think. Not no. just Islamically. Only Islamically. I know there is a controversy going on in all European countries about 
the space for Islamic Sharia. Islam itself, by the very nature of Islam, manifests itself wherever you go on the public arena. Therefore, Europe has to think carefully about this large Muslim population residing in Europe. What are they going to do with this Muslim population? And they are becoming more Muslims, they are becoming more Islamic, sorry, and they, their number or their numbers are increasing, as you know. So what is the future for that? They cannot ignore them, continue ignoring them, okay? They cannot create a European version of Islam because it will not work. It's not possible to adapt Islam in order to make it out of the public arena? No. To say private? Not at all. Impossible. That is not Islam. Ironically, with the rising of extremes, part of the British are reconsidering the French model. Just like the National Secular Association, which fights for the separation of church and state in the United Kingdom. I, th I think um, there's evidence that it is happening all through Europe. Fortunately, France has got its, its protection in the Constitution, which I do hope you will protect very uh, vigorously from uh, attempts to, un you know, to water it down, because that, in the end, will be your best asset in this struggle. I think it, uh, unless we accept that we, we have to do something that will stop the conflict developing, it will develop. The, the religious communities will be at odds with each other. Uh, the state will be at constant odds with religion. Um, we need to have some kind of settlement that will say religion needs to be respected and must be free and must be protected, but it must be separate from the decision-making process of the state. Um, that is the only way we're going to stop this turning into some chaotic, uh, you know, war-filled uh, new Europe. I, I, I really fear for the long-term future. It's, it's scary enough now seeing it develop, but what it will become in the future is even more frightening. Make your choice. The British model or the French model? Secularism or communitarianism? Sound boy killer, impossible for you.